Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Warwick Jungle. Heroes always die. Warwick is a powerful dueling jungler that has a very unique playstyle. Although he's pretty simple, understanding how to use this kit effectively will greatly increase the success you have on the champ. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like and comment on the video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community that are looking to improve, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. I hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Warwick's passive is called Eternal Hunger. Passively, Warwick deals bonus magic damage on hit that scales with both AD and AP. While below 50% health, Warwick also heals equal to the bonus on hit damage that he deals. When below 25% health, this healing is increased to 250%, making him a sustaining machine when he's low on health. This is very simple, but is core to why Warwick is such a monster duelist, especially when he's low. Warwick's Q is called Jaws of the Beast. Warwick bites the target enemy after a short delay, dealing magic damage that scales off AD, AP, and a percentage of the target's maximum health. He also heals for a portion of the damage dealt. While Jaws of the Beast is in effect, Warwick is immune to displacements and sticks to his target, following their position on the map. By tapping Q, Warwick lunges at his target. If Q is held down, Warwick performs the bite and leaps behind his target, following any movement abilities and avoiding CC. Good timing on your Q can really tilt the enemy by dodging in a zero ult or even following an enemy after they think they flashed away to safety. This is Warwick's bread and butter spell for not only playmaking and damage, but also for sustain. Warwick's W is called Blood Hunt. Passively, Warwick senses all enemies on the map below 50% health, marking them with Blood Hunt and gaining bonuses against them. These bonuses are increased to 250% against enemies below 20% of their max health. Upon basic attacking a marked target, Warwick gains bonus attack speed. Warwick also sees trails leading toward blunt hunted enemy champions, gaining bonus movement speed along the path. This bonus is lost for 0.5 seconds upon entering combat, and will take 3.5 seconds to build up again once it's lost. Actively, Warwick begins sensing all enemies within a large radius and marks the nearest enemy champion with Blood Hunt for 8 seconds regardless of their health. While no enemies are currently being Blood Hunted, the current cooldown of Blood Hunt is reduced by 1 each second. This is Warwick's most unique ability, which allows him to quickly travel the map to hunt down low health enemies, or even to get into position quicker when a teamfight is about to break out. Warwick's E is called Primal Howl. When activated, Warwick gains damage reduction for up to 2.5 seconds. If recasted during the duration, Primal Howl's effects end and cause all nearby enemies to flee from him for 1 second and are slowed by 90%. This is Warwick's main defensive tool and crowd control early game. A good combo to learn is EQE, which simply means starting your Primal Howl, holding your Q to lunge behind the enemy, and then recasting E to instantly fear them back towards your team. Another tip is to save your E for when you're low in close call duels. Using the damage reduction when you're low, combined with your passive, will allow you to tank a ton of damage and sustain at the same time. Warwick's ultimate is called Infinite Duress. Warwick leaps in the target direction during which he's immune to crowd control. If Warwick collides with an enemy champion, he stops, knocking them down and channeling for up to 1.5 seconds. This suppresses, reveals, and deals magic damage to them every 0.25 seconds. Warwick is also healed for 100% of the damage dealt to the target during this channel. Infinite Duress applies on hit effects 3 times and life steals at 100% effectiveness. The coolest part about this ultimate is that Warwick gains bonus range based on his bonus movement speed. This allows you to zoom in for some crazy long range alts on targets that you have marked. This spell is extremely versatile. It's a strong dueling tool, engage, escape, and can even be used to dodge crowd control. Lastly, you can even use your E before ulting to grant yourself the damage reduction before engaging. This is a small tip that can make a big difference in teamfights. For ability leveling, Warwick starts Q first, W second, and E third. In most cases, players max W first, Q second, and E third, 
but keep in mind that a lot of high elo warwicks put 3 points into W and then max Q. Now that we've got Warwick's abilities down, let's discuss his best rune setups for the current meta. Warwick has two main runes that are by far his best options right now, Lethal Tempo and Press the Attack. Conquer is also a decent option into extremely tanky teams, but in general, it gets outshined by the other two. Lethal Tempo is an overall amazing rune that gives Warwick crazy dueling power since the extra attack speed translates into even more on-hit damage and healing. Press the Attack is slightly less strong in 1v1s, but provides a bit more utility for your allies in teamfights. To close out the precision tree, Triumph and either Legend Alacrity for more DPS, or Legend Tenacity versus Heavy CC teams, and Last Stand to finish it off. The combination of Triumph and Last Stand provides Warwick with insane power when he gets low on health, which is where he shines. Now for secondaries, Warwick has two main options. First would be the Domination Tree with Eyeball Collection and Relentless Hunter. This setup provides you with some nice snowball potential, especially since Warwick likes to play aggressive early. The other secondary being used by high elo Warwick players is Sorcery. The best options are either Nimbus Cloak and Celerity for a burst of movement speed, or Celerity and Water Walking for stronger dueling potential in the river. Both options are great, it's mainly up to your preference. For Rune Shards, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resist based on your jungle matchup and enemy team comp. Now that you got your runes locked in, let's discuss item builds. To start, both Red Smite and Blue Smite are going to be viable options. Red Smite is a better dueling tool into heavy melee team comps, while Blue Smite is a utility option to lock down mobile squishy carries. For boots, plated steel caps for anti-AD auto attack based teams, merc treads against heavy crowd control, and in very rare cases, Ionian boots of lucidity if you don't need either. Now Warwick is actually very unique since he relies on Tiamat to clear his jungle efficiently. I highly recommend picking this up as a first buy to greatly speed up your clears. Once completed, you can continue to build your mythic item and finish this off later. For mythics, Warwick has three main options. First and most popular is Divine Sunder, followed by both Sunfire Aegis and Frostfire Gauntlet for tank options. Divine Sunder is the most consistent option, especially in solo queue to give you some extra carry potential. If your team needs frontline, Sunfire Aegis is an extremely strong choice to beef up, while Frostfire Gauntlet gives you extra utility to become a nuisance slowing down enemy carries. Keep in mind that both tank options build Bami Cinder, which means Tiamat is not necessary for clearing, but it still helps. For core items, Titanic Hydra is going to be your best second item by far, since it builds out of your first item, Tiamat. Besides that, Warwick actually has tons of options, mainly depending on what the enemy team comp consists of. Items such as Force of Nature and Deadman's Plate are good choices for extra movement speed to pair with your ult, while items such as Thornmail, Spirit Visage, Randuin's Omen, and Sterax Gage are all strong defensive options. From this point, the choices are going to be specific to each game. Learning what items are optimal in each situation is a skill in itself that will increase your success by a huge margin. Now let's get into Warwick's general jungle strategy and pathing. Learning how to play out the early stages effectively is probably the single most important thing you can do to succeed on the champ. First is to remember that before you have Tiamat or Bami Cinder, killing your AoE camp such as Raptors and Krugs is a no-go. We'll discuss this further in a bit, just keep this in mind as you'll need to build your early strategy around this weakness. Next is to always keep your eye on your blood trails since this can give you crucial information as to where the enemy jungler is, where low health laners are, or even which way you should be pathing to simply move faster around the map. Warwick is also very good at doing objectives such as Dragon and Herald, and can heavily punish enemy junglers who show on the map away from the spawned objectives. Another tip is to use smite early in cases where you don't need the smite to secure it, since this will allow your W bonus damage to proc earlier, greatly increasing your DPS. Now for actual jungle paths, since Warwick has no AoE damage, this limits his clears to some specific paths to make use of his strengths. The 3 or 4 camp clear into Invader gank is by far his most consistent route. This allows you to hit level 3 quickly and get onto the map either invading weak enemy junglers who are trying to full clear, or ganking vulnerable laners to start snowballing right away. Clearing wolves is optional depending on if you want to get on the map ASAP or if you want to get that bit of extra XP before making plays. 
It's crucial that you're always paying attention to lane states and where the enemy jungler starts is clear to give yourself as much info as possible before deciding on your next move. After invading or pressuring lanes, you can then fall back to take one scuttle or even both if the situation is right. Although Warwick's pathing options are limited, a good Warwick player will know the best time and place to strike, giving you a big lead heading into the mid game. Warwick's biggest weakness is definitely the fact that he has no AoE damage to clear his camps. This fact makes him very reliant on Tiamat and Bami Cinder to clear effectively. If no early plays go your way, this can mean falling extremely far behind in farming tempo and XP. Next is that Warwick starts to fall off in the later stages of the game. This means you really need to push the pace of the game fast if you want to consistently secure wins. To build on this, Warwick is not the best teamfighter so when games get into huge 5v5 death ball fights, you can sometimes struggle to get on top of enemy carries who are being peeled for. And finally, Warwick has great mobility going towards hunted targets, but is extremely immobile when being chased. Without ult, Warwick is a sitting duck who can easily get punished when out of position. Since his base kit consists of mainly dueling tools, positioning on Warwick is very important, especially in mid to late game scenarios that can decide the outcome of the game. Now let's discuss what makes Warwick such a beast in the jungle. First, is how Warwick is a pretty easy champion to pick up and to start carrying games with. His abilities are all pretty simple, and some basic knowledge is all you need to start taking over games. This allows newer players to focus more on decision making and strategy, and less on mastering complicated mechanics. Next is how Warwick is an absolute nightmare to deal with in the early game. His extremely strong dueling power combined with his hunting mechanic allows a good Warwick player to dictate how the early stages play out on their own terms. Depending on the match, this can mean pressuring weak junglers and fighting them for their camps, or hunting down low health laners who are out of position and start snowballing that way. This leads to the next point, which is that Warwick is actually very versatile. He can play a high tempo ganking style, objective control with his high single target DPS, counter jungling against weaker opponents, or even take on more of a farming role once he has his Tiamat completed. Warwick is an all around solid jungler that has been in the meta for years. His simple yet effective kit makes him a strong pick for pretty much all elos and really is a flexible choice for most games. If you're looking for a strong duelist jungler with the ability to dictate the pace of the game on your own terms, Warwick is definitely the pick for you. That will do it for my season 12 in-depth guide on Warwick jungle. If you want to support my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to keep up with my weekly uploads. Most people who watch are not subbed, and any extra support really helps my channel grow. If you have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll be giving away free coaching sessions every month to the members of the Discord, so be sure to click the link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, thanks again for watching. Until the next video, peace out. <laughs>